From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of cultures, traditions, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Namaskar viewers, welcome back to another episode of My India. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and in today's episode, we're going to offer you a glimpse into India's cultures, diversity along with the developments happening in and around the world. From intricately handcrafted and homemade authentic products to colourful display of cultural performances, the annual Saras Ajivika Mela in India's Delhi NCR is more than a fair. It's a celebration of empowered artisans and their communities. The event not just gives a chance to connect with tradition, but also to support artisans and their livelihoods, contributing to India's self-reliance campaign. In today's episode, let's immerse into the rich cultural kaleidoscope of the Saras Ajivika Mela. Fairs and festivals in India are gateways to the world to peep into the country's rich culture, traditions and ancient history. For some, these occasions are a way to cherish their special moments with family and friends together away from everyday hassles, while for others, this acts as an opportunity to bring happiness to their family by earning remuneration. Though regular holdings of fairs and carnivals were never common before, the government today, to support skilled artisans and ensure their livelihood, is putting in a concerted effort to offer them a platform to earn a fair wage. Recently, to promote the campaign to make India self-reliant, the annual Saras Ajivika Mela has been organized in India's Delhi NCR region at Shilpahat. The event to empower self-help groups which encompasses a colourful display of craftsmanship by local artisans from across Indian states, followed by a number of cultural programmes and events, will continue until the 4th of March. My experience has started here. I am the first time here. जैसे ट्रेड ट्रेड फेयर वगैरह होता है वैसे ही है ये भी काफी अच्छा है अगर देखना चाहे तो अच्छा इन्वॉल्वमेंट है अलग-अलग स्टेट हैं अलग-अलग सारी चीजें हैं मतलब न्यू एक्सपीरियंस है जैसे यहाँ पे जो कारीगर हैं जो हाथ से जो हैंडमेड जो सामान होते हैं ना वो चीज यहाँ पे ज़्यादा बेस्ट ह� Over 400 women craftsmen from across 28 states who are associated with self-help groups and are part of handicraft and rural culture participated to grace the event with their authentic and extraordinary products. From hand-woven and handicrafted items from Indian states, each representing the region's age-old traditions and culture, to finger-licking and devouring items and embellishments at reasonable prices, everything in the fair is a pull factor. Every item in the Saras Mela stall is a captivating blend of contemporary craftsmanship with ancient artistry to which people would come to buy and appreciate their creativity. Our stall is a suit, और दुपट्टा है, स्टोल है, स्काप है, सब बंदेज की चीजें और हम घर पे भी घर पे ही बनाते हैं। ये देखिए, ये पटोला पे, ये बंदेज है, ये मेरा ऑर्डर का काम है। ऑर्डर से भी ये एक्सपोर्ट होता है ये काम। हम सब घर पे करते हैं, हमारे पास 50 औरतें हैं। ये गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से हमको यहाँ पे दुकान फ्री मिलता है। और रहने का रूम फ्री मिलता है, खाना वो सब हमको देते हैं और ये लोन भी गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से मिलता है और इस पे हम काम करते हैं। Over thousands of visitors are witnessed thronging the fair every day who come with families and friends to rejoice in the vibe of this cultural and traditional extravaganza. 
The visitors, while not missing this fair opportunity to buy authentic products at reasonable prices, were found buying items explicitly while sellers on the other side were getting their fair share. Vendors like Krishna Devi, who have been coming to such fairs on the special invitation by government from small states, are seeing this as a means to livelihood as for the entire year they work meticulously on their paintings only to get a fair price for their creativity. I have a glass painting, a glass painting, a artificial jewelry, and this is all stolen. दो साल से आ रहे हैं पिछले साल भी आए थे तो अच्छा सेल हुआ था ये सब जो है गोल्ड का लीप आता है फाइल लाते है उसी को बना हुआ है किस तरीके से आपने बनाया और कितना टाइम लगा इसके बनाने में 6 महीना लग गया मेरा टाइम वो पहले पलाय रहता है पलाय पे उसके कपड़ा डालते हैं उसके बाद पेंट करते हैं इमली बिजली का पाउडर रहता है उसी को देके और उसके बाद फिर स्टोन बैठाते हैं उसको उसी को डिजाइन पाड़ते हैं इमली का बीज का पाउडर का अरबी का गम रहता है फिर कल रहता है उसी से उसके बाद फिर स्टोन बैठा के डिजाइन पार के उसके बाद फिर हम गोल्ड कल फाइल लेते हैं उसी को बिठाते हैं उसके बाद फिर हम कलर करते हैं Additionally as part of the annual Ajivika Mela over 85 cultural programs have been organized in order to sustain the interest of visitors for longer the arrangements like camel rides for children and adults, parades showcasing small stunts and folk dances by groups overwhelm the people with joy and happiness. It's good, like different, different states ka hai and it's nice and uh, like high state ka handicraft and kafi sundar sundar cheez hai. वो जो हैंडमेड उसको क्या बोलते हैं वो जो मिट्टी के बने होते हैं क्या बोलते हैं हाँ वो ही टेरा कोटा स्टेज एवरीथिंग इज वेरी नाइस एक्चुअली वो स्पेशली हैंडमेड जो है वो बहुत ही अच्छी लग रही हैं पर वी कैन बाय एवरीथिंग ना सो इट्स ओके अच्छा नाइस हमने बेड कवर्स एंड डेकोरेशन पीसेस एवरीथिंग वी हैव बॉ Price range, I think, is fair because most of this is handmade. So I guess it's the price range. So bargaining is a little less. Naturally, they have made so many things from their hands, so it's okay. They should take this much. Events like these provide a great opportunity for people to experience the cultures. Moreover, it also helps to improve the living standards of lakhs of women by providing them with a platform to earn a fair wage. Moving on, the spirit of unity echoes beyond borders as the recent inauguration of the first ever BAPS temple in Muslim majority Abu Dhabi signifies a world transcending religious divide. This Hindu shrine stands not just as a testament to faith, but as a powerful symbol of a world coming together in peace and understanding. Take a look. India, a land of diverse culture and traditions, has been flourishing with the divinity of sacred religions for ages, the essence of which has empowered unity and brotherhood in the country. Be it Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs or Christians, the country has always leveraged them equal rights to pursue and preach their religions freely. While today the country is nurturing to bring together the entire world into a common thread of peace and brotherhood, the world is also extending hands towards India looking for the same. The inauguration of the newly built BAPS Hindu temple in an Islamic country like Abu Dhabi is a glowing example of the changing world which is growing beyond religious divides. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi was invited to inaugurate the stone-carved Hindu temple in the UAE, one of the largest traditional temple in West Asia. The foundation stone of the temple was laid by him during his visit in 2015. जब साल 2015 में उनके सामने 
आप सबकी ओर से यहां अबूधाबी में एक मंदिर का प्रस्ताव रखा तो वो तुरंत एक पल भी गवाए बिना उन्होंने हा कह दिया और उन्होंने यहां तक कह दिया जिस जमीन पे तुम लकीर खींच लोगे वो मैं दे दूंगा The Babs Hindu Mandir in Abu Dhabi enshrines a diverse range of deities reflecting the inclusivity and pan-Hindu character of the Swami Narayan Sanstha. Moreover, the temple follows the pattern of North Indian Nagara style featuring tall shikhar or spires, intricate carvings and pillared halls. The consecration ceremony drew in a large number of devotees from over 3.5 million strong Indian diaspora who thronged the temple to pay obeisance to the river deities. The enthusiasm among the devotees was evident with their overjoyed and cheerful faces as they attended the grand ceremony. It's a proud feeling being born and raised in this country. to be able to see a, a traditional hindu temple come in this middle east it's a really proud feeling the temple of bocha sanvasi shri akshar purushottam swami narayan sanstha is said to have been constructed with around 1,800,000 bricks and 40,000 cubic feet of marble Additionally, sandstones of 180,000 cubic feet have been used in order to give the temple a rich traditional look. Laid on 27 acres of land, the cost of 108 foot tall Hindu temple is estimated to be approximately 440 million dirham and was constructed with more than 25,000 pieces of stone meticulously carved by skilled artisans in India. The consecration ceremony led by Swami Ishwar Chandra Das and Swami Brahma Vihari Das along with the delegates was accomplished with ancient Vedic rituals keeping intact the age old Hindu tradition. Lokarpan samaro pran pratishtha mahotsav hai aur is mahotsav ka bahut bada ek utsah anand umang bhakton mein shraddhaluon mein hamare bhartiyon mein dikh raha hai. तो पूरे विश्व से लोगों को एक बहुत बड़ी इंतजारी थी इस महोत्सव की बड़े उत्सुक बड़ी उत्सुकता से सब इसकी प्रतीक्षा कर रहे थे और उस प्रतीक्षा का अब अंत आया है तो अमेरिका कनाडा ऑस्ट्रेलिया न्यूजीलैंड इंग्लैंड यूरोपियन कंट्रीज लाइक फ्रांस एंड अफ्रीका के देशों से अरब देशों से गल्फ कंट्रीज से बहुत सारे हरिभक्त और स्वाभाविकता से भारत से तो है ही द फन फैक्ट अबाउट दिस हिंदू श्राइन इज दैट द लैंड टू बिल्ड इट वाज डोनेटेड बाय अ मुस्लिम लीडर व्हाइल द आर्किटेक्चर इज डिजाइन बाय अ कैथोलिक क्रिश्चियन एंड द कंस्ट्रक्शन प्रोजेक्ट वाज मैनेज्ड बाय अ सिख हु वर्क्ड फॉर अ पारसी ग्रुप कंपनी हाउएवर द डायरेक्टर ऑफ दिस इंस्टीट्यूशन इज अ जैन Moreover this also fosters a friendly bond between India and the UAE and empowers a relation beyond trade and geopolitical paths. Well that first visit was the turning point in the relationship. The relationship has been there for quite some time. The diaspora have uh, been here for quite some time and uh, things were happening but they were not happening at the pace that you see today and this is thanks to the special bond and the special uh, friendship between the two leaders the babs temple in abu dhabi stands as a remarkable example of cultural exchange and religious tolerance its architecture seamlessly blends tradition with modernity creating a space for spiritual reflection and appreciation of diverse cultures And now some of the stories that made news recently. The Indian Space Research Organisation ISRO successfully launched a satellite
from Satish Dhawan Space Center, intended to improve weather observation, forecasting, and disaster warning. I'm very happy to announce the successful accomplishment of the mission GSLV F-14 inside 3DS. The rocket GSLV F-14 left a trail of smoke and fire as it carried the satellite inside 3DS and placed it in the designated orbit from its space station in India's Sri Harikota. A beaming mission director, Tommy Joseph, who referred to the GSLV as Naughty Boy after it failed to perform as expected on previous occasions, said it was now behaving just as it should. The ISRO's website said the satellite is designed for enhanced meteorological observations and monitoring of land and ocean surfaces for weather forecasting and disaster warning. Moving on, beyond the regional and religious divides, the diverse nation of India is evolving with the various government initiatives aimed at urban and rural welfare. As the success of Namo Drone program launched to empower rural women in agriculture, promote efficient and sustainable farming practices. Take a look. India is evolving, transcending both the regional and religious divides. With the concerted efforts of the governments that from time to time have introduced many schemes for the welfare and development of urban and rural India. The change is evident today as welfare schemes and programs have begun to impact the lives of people. The Namo Drone Scheme, launched by the government to empower rural women in the field of agriculture, is a glowing testament to that. Under this scheme, drones are being provided to women farmers and they are being taught to operate drones to readily utilize them in agriculture. Meet Sita Devi, a resident of Katleri village in Haryana's Karnal, who is a drone pilot today. Sita, along with managing her household chores, does farming to ensure bread and butter for her family. She has learned to operate a drone under the Namo drone scheme, which she is utilizing for farming activities. Sita is associated with a self-help group, and from there, she became aware of the scheme and became one of the beneficiaries. All the beneficiaries along with Sita were given 15 days of free training under the scheme with a drone. Now that Sita has a drone in her hands, she is able to easily spray pesticides during farming. This is saving her a lot of time and she is also able to contribute to her family's income. With that, Sita has become an inspiration for many women like her in the village who are aspiring to learn drones. सरकार की तरफ से हमें एक इलेक्ट्रिक ईवी मिला है और एक ड्रोन मिला है ड्रोन को और ईवी को चार्ज करने के लिए जनरेटर भी मिला है खेतों में जाने के लिए और ये सब चीजें हमें सरकार ने मुफ्त में दी है और इसे हम खेतों में ले जाकर सप्रे करते हैं जिसमें सरकार की तरफ से हमें पैसा भी मिलता है इसमें किसानों का भी फायदा है और हमारा भी फायदा like Sita Devi, Mandeep Kaur Panno, a resident of Barundi village in the Ludhiana district of Punjab, has also benefited from the Drone Didi scheme. Mandeep Kaur is extremely happy with this scheme of the government, as this is helping her carry out her agricultural related activities smoothly. I November in training in Manisar, Delhi. I was training in December in December. वहाँ पर उन्होंने पहले हमें थ्योरी सिखाई तो फिर सिमुलेटर पर फंक्शन वगैरह उसको कैसे कंट्रोल करते हैं वो सिखाया तो फिर हमें ग्राउंड में लेके गए ड्रोन फ्लाई करना सिखाया फिर हमारे टेस्ट भी हुए जैसे थ्योरी हमने दो दिन सीखी और तीसरे दिन हमारा टेस्ट हुआ फिर उन्होंने हमें दस दिन पढ़ाया फिर हमारा टेस्ट हुआ फिर आयोटिक वाले एग्री वाले आए उन्होंने पाँच दिन की हमें ट्रेनिंग दी तो फिर लास्ट में उनका टेस्ट था वहाँ का एक्सपीरियंस मेरा बहुत अच्छा रहा क्योंकि मैं अलग-अलग जगह से लोग आए थे उनसे मिली। Under the Namo Drone Didi scheme, 
15,000 women self-help groups are being provided drones for agricultural purposes. The initiative not only empowers women in the sector of agriculture but also demonstrates how the government is striving to promote modern technology in the field of agriculture. Namo Drone Didi Yojana was launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on November 30, 2023, under which a target of 15,000 drones was set to provide women from self-help groups with a drone at a total cost of rupees 1261 crore. Under the scheme, many training centers are also being set up across the country to empower the women with proper knowledge and skills before actually handing over the drones to them. भारत के अंदर जो माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी की पहल है ड्रोन दीदी नमो दीदी खास करके ड्रोन के क्षेत्र में तो मुख्य उद्देश्य यह कि हम लोगों ने महिलाओं को सशक्तिकरण देना है चाहे वो ड्रोन दीदी के रूप में हो या उनका ड्रोन रिपेयर मेंटेनेंस के रूप में हो और इसी कड़ी को आगे बढ़ाते हुए ग्रामीण क्षेत्र की महिलाओं को ध्यान में रखते हुए हमने 1276 करोड़ रुपए का भारत सरकार ने एक प्रोविजन रखा है जिससे महिला का जो सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप का उसमें लगभग 1500 महिलाओं के सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप बनाए जाएंगे और उनको इन सभी कार्यों के लिए प्रोत्साहन दिया जाएगा ये स्कीम आने से जो ग्रामीण क्षेत्र की महिलाएं हैं जो अभी तक चूका चूला चौका करती थी तो उन महिलाओं को भी हम लोग मुख्य धारा में लेके आएंगे और कृषि के अंदर ड्रोन की वजह से उनकी भागीदारिता बढ़ेगी Traditionally, it takes more than an hour to spray medicine and urea on an acre of crop. Whereas with drones, this hectic task can easily be done in 6 to 8 minutes, which not only saves time but also reduces water waste. The use of drones in farming has also proved beneficial in reducing labour costs for farmers, which has subsequently increased their profits. The government very well understand the importance of technology in today's time and the launch of an ambitious scheme like Drone Didi is an important step towards the empowerment of women. And now some of the stories from the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. G-Shock is a water and shock resistance watch launched four decades ago by Casio. Since then, the Japanese company has been creating innovative G-Shock models for its customers. Casio has now opened a virtual G-Shock store space called a World in the Metaverse to encourage a culture of outfitting avatars with timepieces, building on the strong support G-Shock enjoys from users for its shock resistance and unique designs. で、特に VR とかは新しいことに興味のある方がたくさんおられると考えています。昔ながらのファンの方もいますけれども、新しいファン獲得というのも非常に重要だと考えておるので、まあ、今回の取り組みを始めさせていただきました。で、今回2つのワールドを用意いたしまして、1つは G ショックのカスタマイズが VR 上でできるというような体験と。もう一つは G ショックの耐久性が体験できるワールドということで二つのコンテンツを用意させていただいております。Virtual Reality G Shock offers the option to customers to personalize the original G Shock with an avatar. The strongest point of G Shock is its toughness. Participants in the virtual reality world can witness its resilience in a variety of environments. Including the sea, mountains, and space. Based on 40 years of functional development and marketing efforts, G Shock will gain more admirers worldwide in the near future. Yokohama City is well known for being a welcoming and alluring destination for tourists. However, the city is developing into a more innovative metropolis as well as a popular tourist destination. 
Recently, Yokohama City hosted an innovation promotion event with the help of 140 businesses, organizations, and educational institutions. The main goals of the event were to address social issues, adapt to future social situations, and spread cutting edge knowledge among youngsters and adults alike. Elgi are also the food base for almost all aquatic life. The JFE engineering staff explains and navigates growing algae. It aims to share knowledge about how algae contributes to the environment. Children who took part received kits for growing algae. The kids paid attention to the noise produced when an electric current passes through fruits. Family members also shared first-hand experience with electricity science. ま、this seminar aimed to introduce successful innovation for future entrepreneurs. In the seminar, government staff recommended challenging and unprecedented issues. A successful Japanese lady in Singapore introduced the differences between Singapore and Japan. Future cutting-edge technology was shown in various places in Minato Mirai, Yokohama and a large number of people, including children and the elderly, enjoyed it. A driverless EV car runs on the road as a demonstration experiment. It is 25 km per hour level 2 with 8 passengers. Yokohama is now developing into a forward-thinking metropolis that embraces social issues and the aspirations of its citizens. And now, Bringing joy and comfort to the students of the Government Higher Secondary School at Dehri Ralot in the border district of Rajori, the government has established a new academic building. The school now has state-of-the-art labs and smart classes to enhance the learning opportunities for the students. In the border area and hilly terrain, the construction of the school building was certainly a challenge, but also an enduring gift to the students. The development of this modern school would certainly encourage the school children to study hard and bring laurels for the country. Take a look. The good education is the bedrock of national growth. With an aim to develop the young minds, the government is endeavouring to provide quality infrastructure and education in every district of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. In the border district of Rajori, the administration has established a new school building for the students of Government Higher Secondary School in Dehri Raliot. The new school building has been equipped with the state-of-the-art science labs and smart classrooms to provide quality education. We have classrooms, desks, we have a lab, smart classes. उसके बाद और भी यहां पे अभी बिल्डिंग भी कंस्ट्रक्शन के लिए है जिससे हमें बहुत ज्यादा फायदा हुआ है फिर लैब्स हैं पहले साइंस की लैब्स भी नहीं होती थी और हमारी प्रॉपर क्लासेस होती हैं साइंस स्ट्रीम की भी नॉन साइंस स्ट्रीम की भी आर्ट स्ट्रीम के भी सारे लेक्चरर्स हैं under the Samagra Siksha scheme of the government, information and communication technology labs have also been set up to keep the students up to date with the developments happening all across the globe. A number of residential buildings have also been constructed so that teachers coming from other districts could save travel time and stay available for the students. We have been in school for 2 years. In 2 years, there was no place to sit here. There was no place to sit here. There was no place to sit here. Now, there are residential quarters. The teachers who are out of the district can stay here. And for our children, we have made a children's park. The construction of the school building in hilly terrains of the border district was certainly a challenge for the administration. 
but it is also an enduring gift to the students who are now filled with excitement and are ready to bring laurels for the Union Territory and the whole nation. And that's all we have for you this week. I'm your host Pratik Shamishra and it's a goodbye from the entire production team. Thank you.